So you may be asking yourself, Lewis, what are you doing at a boat marina? Not my normal content, and I get that, and I'm going to explain it here in a second. Just let me get in the car where the noise is a little bit better, and we'll get right into the details. This is going so badly. So what I'm doing here is actually working on a summer side income for Primo to kind of get it rolling, get it off the ground. And what that is, is doing boat cover work. My father and my grandmother have been doing it for years and years and years, so I've taken the opportunity to go down and learn from them to kind of make a little bit of extra money in the, on the side. Now, an average boat cover can be anywhere from like $800 to $2,000 and range from anywhere from a couple hours to a weekend worth of work. So in my mind, if I can take the skill I have in an area that has nobody doing this work on the lake and I'm able to pump out high quality boat covers in about a day for about $1,400, making about a $1,000 profit, I think that's gonna be well worth it as a summer job to kind of get the funding that I need to build Primo up to where it has to be. And today is my first time meeting with a client about a boat cover. Um, I did a little bit of talking with my dad about how the price should be, and he hit me with a, with a number around $1,000, um, and I would like to range up more towards $1,500. And you might be asking, why are you going to be ranging towards $1,500? Because personally, I think that I wanna go at a higher end, sell a higher quality product, and really be selective in the people that I choose. I don't want just anybody bogging me down with work because I have plenty of tailoring work as it is, and I'll show you that later on when we get to our shop. Um, so I really wanna set myself apart as a luxury option, just very much like Primo, even though there's not a lot of people doing it in my area. So I'm about to go talk to them, take some notes, write some things down on my first job. I'm a little bit nervous about handling this, but I think it's gonna go well, so stay tuned. I'm gonna go meet with them here whenever they pull their boat in and we'll go from there. All right, see you guys. So quite literally, as soon as I left the marina, I got this message. Which is kind of what I expected after seeing her husband's reaction, um, which tells me a few things. One, it's not the type of customer I'm looking for. No offense to them. He seemed like a very nice guy. She seems like a very lovely lady. Um, but it just doesn't seem like the client range that I want to deal with. So. I am now going to go about responding to her message, um, trying to come up with why I price the way I price uh, and see what the reaction is. But I don't think it's gonna be too good. But again, I'd rather lose this customer than be stuck dealing with somebody who's not paying me nearly enough as what I want um, and still wanting a very perfect product. So we'll see how this goes. <laughs> So here she's talking about the Amish charging 600 but long turnaround time. Just my cost alone on materials is going to be around three to 400 so I'm only making a $200 profit on this. Um, so I'm just going to go in here and tell her why it's much more expensive for me and if she's happy with the Amish go for it. Um, but in a very polite way because I don't want anyone to think that I'm trying to be cocky or rude in this but if she can get a better price and she's happy with the work. I'm all for it. I'm looking for a different type of customer and that's what I'm going to respond here. And again, we'll wait and see what she says um, to what I have to say.
So this one took me a little bit longer to write out and get it all, all my thoughts in one place. I hope it works out. I prefer a call on the phone. Um, just so that I can explain it a little bit further, a little bit better to her. Um, and it doesn't feel, everything I was writing out just seemed very robotic and unpersonalized. So I really want to make sure it's personalized on the phone if she would like to. Otherwise, I will finish talking on the phone through Facebook Messenger, but we'll see. She just read it, so Let's see if she says anything. this point I honestly don't know why she's holding on still I'm wondering if she's not actually happy with the Amish work but if it were me I would just be like oh not interested thank you bye um, so we'll see how she takes this um, but at this point I'm just trying to save face I'm not really trying to get the job anymore um, I just don't want her to be super ticked off or say something mean on Facebook um, <laughs> But yeah, I mean, if the Amish offered you 600, I'd be taking that heartbeat, and I would honestly hire a few of them. Um, hopefully she doesn't take that wrong, because it's really hard to do humor in texting, uh, unless you have a really cool person on the other end, and we'll see how she reacts. Here we are in the studio. Um, I told you I would show you the work that I've been doing and all the amount of work that I have to do. So let's get into it. Come on this way. Now, I will warn you, it's gonna get pretty loud in here, guys, so don't mind the audio. Maybe we'll overlay with some music or something and then I'll do a voiceover. We'll see if it's that bad, but it's pretty loud in here. So here is our clothing rack. All of that stuff needs to be done. At some point, some of that stuff needs to be done. Um, just as an example, I'm not going to show you anybody's names or anything, but this right here, this right here, that's about $500 worth of work. This right here, about $300 worth of work. Um, I'm going to do this, this stuff right here. This is going to be about another $500 worth of work. So literally from here, I didn't even add in this stuff, but like from here to about here, there's probably close to 1,500, three grand. Um, and this is kind of the reason why I didn't want to go too long on the boat cover, because this stuff needs done. It needs to be done probably this week or next week. And I can't mess around with doing low budget boat work for people when I have plenty of stuff to go. Alrighty, so we just talked about the amount of work we have to do. Now I'm going to talk about how we go about pricing it, different customers, the set, how we set our prices and all that. So let's get over to the board. So here we are talking about our price list. Now this is a standard itemized sheet of coats, pants, and shirts. And for the most part, this doesn't change. Now, come a little bit closer. So even though these are all set prices, this doesn't mean that I'm going to stick with these forever and for every job. This is just so that it makes it easier for people to kind of price out what their jobs might cost and help me give people quotes on the front end. Everything from my line items to my custom jobs can go up or down depending on three different types of factors. One is going to be the price of the garment actually. So if it's a very high end piece of clothing, something for like the sleeves might go up just because I'm going to be dealing with a nicer fabric. It's gonna take an extra level of care. Point number two, it would either go up or down is depending on what I'm paying someone to do the job. So if I have people working with me on a particular project, say they're taking in the sleeves of a shirt, if I need to pay that person $20 to do the job and then upsell it, it might need to go up to 30, or if the person's able to do it for say $10, I might be able to sell it to them for $20. So it kind of fluctuates depending on the cost of the work being done. Also the speed, so for any kind of rush, scrap that, I need to learn how to spell, rush jobs, there's at least a $20 fee on top of that. So any one of these plus $20 per item that needs rushed, and by rush, that's usually between a week and a half um, 
Anything less than a week to a week and a half is considered a rush job for me. So my method for pricing, whether it's a boat cover, whether it's any of these line items or a custom sewing job is all going to be predicated around those few factors. So pretty much what I like to tell people is that these are the prices for me to do the job today in this time frame right now. It might change in a week if things change for me. So really any of this can change, but we like to keep these line items for people to see as a rough estimate of what it's gonna cost. Now most of this stuff is pretty industry standard. I have bumped it up a little bit higher just for myself because Primo is going for that more luxury high ticket brand. So we just got done talking about knowing your worth, how I price out jobs, um, and also how much work we have left to do just for this week alone. Now, the only thing left to do is get to it. Well, thank you guys for making it to the end of this video. I'd really appreciate you following along with the story of Primo and how we're building this brand up. Hopefully this episode talking about pricing and knowing your worth was extremely valuable to you guys. If it was, we would really like it if you shared, liked, commented, all of that great stuff. Um, that way we just know what kind of content, if it's this, tutorials, what we should be making more of. But thank you guys for being here for the whole process of this week in the life of Primo. I'll see you guys next time.